So on board those buses as well, those inverters are bi-directional which means not only can we charge from the AC, but we can press a button on those vehicles and it energizes that port with 220 volts AC and about 30 to 40 amps. So it becomes a mobile generator and you can discharge from those vehicles. I can charge the bus literally with a taxi or I can charge a bus with a bus. So vehicle to vehicle charging, very simple. Vehicle to load is very simple. Vehicle to grid is very complex because then you need a partner like the utility company to be able to send the SCADA signals and control this remote asset. So in China, they're starting to do the laboratory testing on our campus to do vehicle to grid. Um, we haven't done it in the US or with a utility yet. But the technology is bi-directional, so it's capable of doing that. Next slide. The a life cycle of the iron phosphate is really key to my next part of the discussion because part of the barrier that I see to the smart grid and the barrier to uh, higher saturations of renewables is that they do destabilize the grid. More wind, more solar causes a very different generation profile than, than our grids are used to. And because of the uncertainty of the wind and current, certainly the uncertainty of the sun, um, you need some way to balance that. BYD believes energy storage is the key. But the problem with energy storage becomes price. At the end of the day, it has to be cost effective. You don't want to put a very expensive energy storage solution attached to, to the grid if it, if it doesn't pay back well. So BYD's vision is all the modules that we're designing for these, you can do one click, for these vehicles, and I'm just taking one example, Shenzhen example. I launched two, uh, 300 electric buses in uh, 2010, and I launched uh, about that many taxis in January of 2009. The taxis are meant to last about five years. They take them out of service and either resell them to the gray market or they scrap them. The buses in China only last eight years. In the US, we use them 12 to 15, even push them to 18 years. But I'm looking at 300 electric buses that literally are 97 megawatt hours of battery. And these electric taxis, the first electric taxis we've had in service for the first five years, have gone about 260,000 miles. So one taxi driven 260,000 miles. When we're pulling the energy modules out of those taxis, they have 92% of their original capacity. So the iron phosphate chemistry is extremely robust and it has a very predictive gradual discharge curve. And I can show you discharge curves if you're interested in them, but I try to keep this higher level. But what I'm saying is we won't even halfway consume these batteries in the first purpose. So the electric buses I'm pulling off, and I believe I'll pull them off in eight years and they'll still be well above 80% capacity. I'll be able to click, repurpose them, click into home energy storage applications, to community energy storage, to fixed energy storage, and we're already demonstrating the repurposing of these by re-qualifying them at a new capacity. They're not 100% fresh batteries anymore, but we can recertify those batteries at 90% of their original capacity. So instead of a 200 amp hour cell, I now have a 180 amp hour cell, and by sorting and balancing those cells, now I have a fixed energy asset that's very easy to populate. We've installed four of those containers. That's okay, stay, that's okay, it's fine. You can go back to that, go okay. We've installed four of those containers. Um, oh, there's one container in the center there that's in Charlotte and Duke Energy's grid. We've installed four up in PG&E's area at the Santa Rita jail. Chevron took that jail. Uh, they, they created the, the world's largest certs-based microgrid, but it's not isolated. It, it literally connects to the grid and, and um, synchronizes with the grid probably every night. So if the battery gets charged from the solar panels, that's great. If it gets wind, that's great. They run the, they run the jail from the battery. It's a four megawatt hour battery. And then if the battery gets too discharged by the evening, so we're saying after nine or 10 o'clock, they charge from the grid off peak. They raise the battery up to about an 80%. The next morning when the sun's up, they start charging the batteries again. 
So they operate the, 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 the jail, the Santa Rita jail, literally in an off-grid manner, but they connect to, to use the grid to charge up the battery where their renewables haven't fully charged. And their master controls do all the synchronization, uh, so it islands for a time and then it resyncs when it charges the battery. In China, I'll, I'll talk about, uh, in China, they've done some very large scale uh, battery systems. Um, they've done a 36 megawatt hour uh, system in the Hubei region, which is a state grid, and they're expanding that to 110 megawatts. What you need to understand about Hubei is it started as 40 megawatts of solar, 110 megawatts of wind, no fossil fuels. And it's been doing base load generation for 18 months. So base load renewable generation made possible with battery storage. It's a pretty big battery storage. But we believe the the market for repurposed batteries that are requalified at, you know, whatever capacity is remaining is, is very large. And when you're talking about an iron phosphate cell that gets seventy two hundred cycles, well if I cycled that cell once per day, anybody can do the math. Seventy two hundred divided by three hundred and sixty five days. That's a twenty that's over a twenty year battery. We warranty that battery in the United States for 10 years, and we make it third-party transferable. So if you sell your car, your E6, or you sell your fleet vehicles, that, that warranty is third-party transferable. Next slide. So what BYD has in our, in our vision is really a truly zero emissions ecosystem. We believe that our first dream is really to deliver affordable solar power but make that renewable relevant to the grid by making it firm and dispatchable. And that's with low cost energy storage. And we believe the, the way to that, the path to low cost energy storage is by fully depreciating the value of those batteries in the first purpose, the vehicle. Then the batteries are literally free. I mean, there's some added value we have to, to resort them, but if the battery has a remaining capacity of 90%, they're perfect for fixed energy storage, for ramp rate control, for renewable balancing, enabling the smart grid, and then delivering that energy responsibly to electric vehicles, LED lighting systems, and that's what BYD fills out in our portfolio. So a sustainable public transportation solution is what we're targeting first. So rapid transit, fixed routes, we're targeting those applications first. Then we're targeting long range, high utility electric vehicles. It's very different than what our competitors are targeting. We're targeting fleets, taxi fleets, long range applications where they're driving two shifts a day because we're not worried about cycling the batteries. We have lots of cycle overhead. We also have a lot of overhead in the bus as far as the battery capacity so that, that repurposing becomes something that we can do now and make those commercial ecosystems and those residential ecosystems relevant we can actually sell energy storage at a cost that the consumers will now be able to buy. And that's, that's kind of our corporate vision. I think that's my last slide. I mean, I have other slides, but that's only a question.